Today's readings are going to be from Ezekiel chapter 37 and from John chapter 11. Here's a reading from Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord has come upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to those bones, and, I, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover, your, cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and I prophesied, and suddenly there was noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then God said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then God said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place on you and I will place you on your own soil then you shall know that I the Lord have spoken and will act and now our reading from the gospel of John the 11th chapter now a certain man was ill Lazarus of Bethany the village of Mary and her sister Martha Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death, rather it is for the Lord's glory, so that the Son of Man may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then, just after he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again, the disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus said, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. So after saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen, fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. Jesus said to him, the disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I, I'm glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us go that we may die with him. When Jesus had arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and to Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him and while Mary stayed home. And Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. So Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever, those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back to, and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is there 
is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were there with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and those who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So they said, See how he loved him. But some of, some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? The Gospel of the Lord. Now, today's appointed Gospel lesson actually doesn't end there. Today's Gospel lesson ends with the miraculous raising of Lazarus. Um, a lot of times when I use this text, my favorite place to use it is for a funeral. And when I use it for a funeral, I always stop there. And as we're all sheltered in place, we're socially distanced, or at least somewhat interrupted from our normal life, I figure that this moment is probably a good moment for us to stop where I stopped here too. Because even though this isn't a funeral, this is certainly a time where we are mourning, where we are experiencing disruption and grief, where we're experiencing loneliness, where I think in a lot of ways we also very closely mirror the experience of Ezekiel looking at those bodies that were laying there in the Valley of Bones, wondering at the Lord's question, mortal, can these bones yet live? And we hear a lot of people with doom and gloom, a lot of people who are either convinced that the economy can't recover or that our culture can't recover or, you know, that, or maybe they're convinced that this isn't a big deal at all and maybe, maybe they're, they're just absolutely certain that all of the hullabaloo is, is all for naught because this thing would have just blown over anyway. And the problem in any situation like this is we just don't know. God knows, but we just don't know. And I, I think that it is this not knowing that maybe bothers me more than anything else because, uh, you know, I don't really have to control the people around me, but I've got to control me. And, and I always feel a, a deep need to be able to, to figure out what I'm going to do. You know, Ezekiel looking out over the Valley of Bones and, and the Lord saying to him, mortal, can these bones yet live? You know, I, I mentioned uh, that on Thursday evening I had an accident in the kitchen with a butter knife and I was, uh, I was doing something that I know better than to do. I, I was uh, holding a mushroom, an enoki mushroom with a thick stalk in my hand and I was just trying to push through the stock with the butter knife and it wouldn't push through so I pulled and when I pulled I was closer to the edge of the stock than I expected and the knife had a little bit of an edge on it and the next thing I knew I was looking at what appeared to be bone and uh, I had a moment where all I could do was just say Lauren I messed up I messed all the way up and we got to go to the hospital I you know, and I, I realized as uh, Lauren and I were getting ready to walk out the door that I, I could not bend my finger. My finger is stuck straight. And uh, it's because I, I severed the tendons. There, there's a piece of me that wonders, you know, and this is, this is much lower stakes than, than what Ezekiel was dealing with and what Mary and Martha and Jesus and the disciples were dealing with. They're, and it's much lower stakes than what we're dealing with in this, in this COVID-19 pandemic. But, uh, you know, I, I'm used to having 10 fingers that work. And, and all of a sudden, without warning, I felt vulnerable and I felt very human. And I felt much weaker than what I am accustomed to feeling 
because I'm, I'm really accustomed to be pretty competent and, and pretty independent. And over the last couple of days, I've realized, you know, just how much we rely on the tools that we normally have at our disposal for them all to work. And, you know, I, I think about this and I think about how powerless we really all end up being. And all of us are in this position of, of Ezekiel looking out at this valley of dry bones seeing the hopes of a people dried up, seeing the dust covering the dreams that once stood in the, in the same way that the plans that we had for these last couple of weeks and the next several are, are vanished. And we all find ourselves in the midst of something new that we didn't plan. And, and we find ourselves... I, I think Mary and Martha are, are wonderful examples of some of the reactions in, in the way in which we find ourselves. I always picture Martha when she says to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Martha was kind of hard-edged. And, and I hear that almost as an accusation because Martha is someone who appreciates action. And she's someone who likes to know that the, the stars are all in their orbit and the sun is in the sky and that nothing's really going to disturb things because she very much likes that order. And if she knows anything, she knows that if Jesus had been there, things would have been okay. So that's what Jesus gives to her. Jesus gives her that presence and that reassurance and, and that good news. I am the resurrection and the life and those who believe in me will never die and those who believe in me and die will yet live. Do you believe this? And Martha, in, in confessing that belief, found the comfort of action that she needed. Now, Mary is someone who's different. Mary was the one who anointed Jesus' feet with, with perfume and dried his feet with her hair. She is someone who values deep, close, personal, intimate relationship. And I, what I hear of her in saying, Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died, is... That, that deep, questioning, yearning, faithful desire for, for presence together that can be found only face to face. Someone to share with her her feelings. Martha was someone who wanted to share in the work. But Mary needed to know that, we were all, that, she, that someone was on the same wavelength with her. And so Jesus asked her the question, well, where have you laid him? And she invited Jesus, well, come and see. At that invitation, Jesus wept. It's a powerful scene. It's, it's powerful because we see a couple of things. One is that Jesus didn't cheapen their grief by saying, well, heaven gained another angel today. Or uh, don't worry, ladies, it's all part of God's plan. You know, in the, in the same way, God stood with Ezekiel in the valley and let him behold the dry bones. God didn't lead Ezekiel into a valley with people who were already raised and breath already in them. He led them into the place of death, into the place of hopeless despair, into the place where the battle was lost and the victory was gone. And Jesus stands at the tomb with Martha and Mary and we stand too at the tomb of all the plans that we made knowing that we'll be visiting some grave sites whether it's for people who we know or just mourning what might have been as as we mourn the loss of who we might have been had our plans not been interrupted and mourning who we must become as we face together this new, frustrating, awful reality. In, in Ezekiel, we get to hear the promise of new life in God as God calls for muscle and sinew and flesh and skin to dwell upon the bones and to knit themselves together and in a, in a way that reflects the Genesis creation of God creating with dirt and fashioning the, the earth dude out of dirt. We have God fashioning the people of Israel, 
the people of God bone to bone and flesh to flesh. And we're reminded of something that I believe is very important right now. That just subsisting, just existing, just keeping flesh in our bones is not what we're called to. We are called to something different and something deeper. We are called to be the people of the breath, the people of the spirit, the, the people who have hope that in the place where death prevails, death is not the final answer. That where there is death, there is also resurrection. Where there is brokenness, there is healing. And where we stand at the foot of the cross and look upon our Lord who was crucified, we can hear both halves of the promise. A little while and you will not see me. And a little while you will see me again. But right now we, deal, we dwell with Mary and Martha and Jesus on the road. And we stand in our grief, hoping for the glory of God to be revealed. As we stand here in this Lenten space, this space in between, this liminal moment between what was and what will be, knowing that we will be transformed and changed, but not having any idea or context for what that looks like. I invite you to dwell here for a moment, not to wallow and, and not for pity's sake, but to recognize that it's in these vulnerable spaces where we recognize our own humanity, our own brokenness, our own vulnerability, that we are able to encounter the glory of God, not because God causes these things, but because it's in our weakness that we begin to experience God's presence in its fullness. Because it's only when we recognize our weakness that we are able to recognize that we are in need of a strength that's beyond our own. And, as the people of God, we are called to bear that strength for the people around us that is beyond our own, to love more strongly, to be more patient, to care more deeply for those around us, knowing that they are struggling too. And this is hard. Right now, lots of people are wrong on Facebook. And if you know me, you, like I know to, you know that I like to help those people. It's, it's hard not to join in the anxiety, and sometimes we can't help ourselves. And during this moment, we are called to stand with those who have no hope and say to them that I know the one who puts flesh back on bones and who breathes breath back into old dead lungs. And that one is calling us to life together. How is it this week that you'll be breath for those who need to breathe? How is it that this week you will be hope for those who can't see how the sun is going to rise in the morning? How is it that you will join in tears with those who need someone to weep with them? Because even though we have hope in what will come, we know that this moment is challenging and our grief is real. And the thing that we know about love is that love doesn't cheapen grief with cheap grace. This week, be the hands and feet of Christ for the people around you and give them the love that dwells in the midst of pain and know that that's where healing begins, in the midst of it, so that we might all be together, just as God has promised. Amen.